Soon je suis Yosoi with Tashiwa Nanun Ego Sum. I am Chris. And this is Chris in English. And today I want to know what is the most boring thing of all. Yeah, I know, not everything in this world is interesting, not everything in this world is exciting. But we're going to talk about exciting things too. But the question of the day what is? the most boring thing of all. Dungeon! My Dungeon and Dragon is here! Oh my goodness, I'm very happy to see you, sir. You're doing well. <laughs> Let's oh. see him. Oh my goodness, there he is. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Dungeon and Dragon. He used to be my student. <laughs> and now he's my special guest star on the show. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? I am fantastic, sir. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. I hope I, you're safe and healthy, too. Oh, Very I much. Sure I, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Oh, are you, so, Dungeon, my Dungeon and mm -hmm. Dragon friend, are you practicing your English? Um, I guess. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. I, don't, I, don't, I don't really practice it every day, but... Like every time I got the chance, I tried to mm, prepare and do some English stuff. Good. Well, I'm glad you do. And of course, if you ever have questions and you ever need help, please come to me. You're my okay. dungeon dragon. <laughs> I'm just glad I see you again. <laughs> hey, uh, I hope this is a, a fair question. Are you still with your girlfriend? Sure, I I do. <laughs> I am I, so happy to hear that. Yeah. Tell her I said hello. Hiya, Aya. Look, Aya, it's Dungeon and Dragon. Oh. Our dungeon's oh. here. Hello. <laughs> I can remember you, actually. Of course you can. Mm -hmm. Of oh. course I do. <laughs> <laughs> dungeon, I'm going to let you go now. I'm going to finish my show. Okay. Okay, I, sure. God, we've got a great show. We've got lots of stuff that we're going to do today. Okay. okay. I'm going to watch it, okay? Like, All right. Just just say I'm, I'm – I don't just want to say hello to you. I am glad <laughs> you did, sir. Thank you. Okay. And hello, to you. and hello to everybody. The question of the day today, what is special class? Yes, it's a spe very special class. I've got two great students. I've got a Dungeon and Dragon. And I got a Haya Aya. What more do I want? <laughs> what is the most boring thing of all? That is the question of the day. Uh, and today we're going to talk about set phrases for interest and boredom. We're going to talk about the Nobel Prize in chemistry. We've got election news. And, of course, we're going to talk about the world of the day. The word of the day. So let's get to it. Uh, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was announced today. Ho, oh, Mo! Good to see you. Welcome to the show, Mo. <laughs> the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was announced yesterday, and I read about it this morning, and I'm very excited about who won and why. So congratulations to Emmanuel Carpentier. I hope I said that right, Dr. Carpentier. And Jennifer A. Duodna, and I hope I said that right, Dr. Duodna. These two women won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. And they won for their work on CRISPR technology. Woo! CRISPR. I love CRISPR. I love CRISPR. Uh, CRISPR is a technology which allows researchers to change the DNA to change the DNA of plants, animals, microorganisms, and to do so with a high pre precision rate. Uh, Goran K. Hansen, the Secretary General of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, describes this year's prize as science that allows us the rewriting the code of life. Rewriting the Code of Life. That's what CRISPR does. And that's why these two women won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. This technology has already had a huge 
impact on curing diseases, two diseases in particular. Sickle cell anemia, they've done, uh, they've done research using CRISPR to help someone who has sickle cell anemia, a terrible blood disease, and now they seem to be cured. Another disease, uh, beta, uh, beta thalassemia, and I know I didn't say that right. Beta thalassemia is another bloodborne disease that CRISPR has been able to help cure. Wow, this is great technology. This technology is so great. Full disclosure, for about a year or so, I have owned stock in a CRISPR company. Not going to say which one. I don't want to. I don't want to throw the markets, but I love this technology. So, hey, we got Margie Davis. My mom is in the house. Hello, mom. Good to see you this morning. Uh, we're talking about the Nobel Prize in Chemistry that went to two women, Emmanuel Carpentier and Jennifer A. Duodna, for uh, their work on CRISPR technology. But that's not why you guys are here. That's not why you're here. I know why you're here. You are here for the word of the day. Yes, my friends, it is time. I am going to teach you a word that you can use in the English-speaking world. And I hope that this word is not too respectful. Is that a hint? Is that a clue? Is that information that can help you Figure out what our word of the day today is, respectful? Maybe it is, because our word of the day today is an adjective. Yes, our word of the day today is a great word. You will hear this word a lot, actually. I would call this a once a week word. Yeah, our word of the day today is venerable. Venerable. Adjective. It means worthy of great respect. If something deserves great, deep respect, we say it is venerable. Now, this respect usually comes because of age. A person who is old would be considered venerable and worthy of respect because of their age. But also a, per a person who has a high office a senator, a mayor, a president. We would also say they are venerable, worthy of respect because of their office or title. Sometimes a person's character, their personality, they are such a good person that just based on that, we would say they are venerable, worthy of respect. Yeah. Here's a sentence for you. Oh, let me start with our spelling. Here's the spelling for our adjective, venerable. Dungeon. Dungeon doesn't need me to spell venerable for him. He's got it. V-E-N-E-R-A-B-L-E. -E -E. Venerable. Very good. Adjective meaning worthy of great respect. The judge addressed the courtroom with the venerable dignity you would expect from his position. Venerable, worthy of respect. Adjective, the judge addressed the courtroom with the venerable dignity. Dignity is the noun, venerable describes the noun. One more sentence for you. <clears throat> if a president made wise decisions, he would certainly be considered a venerable leader. Uh, Dungeon's giving us a sentence with his word of the day. It says, so I might be able to say, Chris is venerable. Dungeon, are you calling me old? Are you saying I'm old, Dungeon? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. I consider you to be venerable as well. Not because you're old. Oh, no, 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 no. But because you're such a great person. And I mean that sincerely, Dungeon. Sincerely. Synonyms for venerable. Respected. Honored. 
esteemed and distinguished, worthy of great respect. <laughs> Dungeon saying no, he doesn't want to be venerable. He wants to be smart. Good choice. But you can be both, Dungeon. If you want to learn more words, more vocabulary, or if you want to learn more interesting facts, like who wins the Nobel Prize for Chemistry, please check out the website, chrisinenglish.com. I should make a song. I should make a song. I'll, I'll let chrisinenglish.com. Go to chrisinenglish.com. You can learn more vocabulary. You can do reading exercises. You can learn grammar. You can do it all. You can do it all. Let's do some election news real quick. Uh, the election in the United States is less than a month away. November 3rd is when everyone in the United States will go to the polls to elect a new president. Maybe not a new president, but probably a new president. The polls show Joe Biden is ahead of Donald Trump nationally. 53 points to 42 points. So Vice President Biden is ahead by about 10 points nationally. But as we know, the national numbers do not count for anything. My mom is telling me not to give up my day job, probably because of my singing. Mom? My mom. When I was young, I would, I would draw the worst pictures in the world with crayon, and she would take those pictures. She was, oh, Chrissy Poo Pie Po, that's a pretty picture. I'll put it on the refrigerator. And now today, I sing a short little song, and suddenly I have to keep my day job. <laughs> Dungeon is telling me that he saw the debate between Donald Trump and Vice President Biden last week. Tell me, Dungeon, what did you think? Do you have any opinions, any thoughts, any views? Ha ha, he says ha ha, okay. <laughs> I saw the debate last week. I'm gonna watch the vice presidential debate tonight as well. Uh, the, to, last week we saw the presidential candidates debate. Tonight we're gonna see the vice presidential candidates debate. Uh, and Vice President Pence has a big job to do. He has to clean up what the president did last week. So he has to defend the White House's response to coronavirus. But the president is sick with coronavirus. Mom's saying that she doesn't put my pictures on the refrigerator because I'm not two anymore. Yes. So my mom is saying I'm venerable because I'm older than I was. Thanks, mom. Um, President Trump is sick with coronavirus. Tonight, Vice President Pence will get questions about that, and he'll be asked, is the government doing enough to keep Americans safe if it can't keep the president safe from coronavirus? Uh, he has to project, project confidence in the government. Vice President Pence has to, has to make people think that the Trump administration is trustworthy. That might be a tall wall to get over. Also, he has to be nice. Last week, the president was not nice. So vice president has to show that the administration has a little bit of niceness in them somewhere. Those are the three things that the vice president has to do tonight. What does Senator Harris need to do? Her job is much easier. First of all, her side, her, her campaign is ahead in the polls. Not just the national polls, but many of the swing state polls as well. Uh, she needs to show class. That's all pretty much what she has to do. She has to show class and dignified, venerable behavior. If she behaves in a venerable way, she will most likely win the debate by default. Ah, I'll be watching the debate. And tomorrow, I'll be telling you what I thought about what we watched tonight. Dungeon, watch the debate tonight. Come back tomorrow and we'll talk about it together. That's my election news. Now, let's talk pumpkin. Ah, I'd like to show everybody, introduce you all to my pumpkin. This is my pumpkin.
pumpkin for Halloween. Yeah. Uh, those of you who have been in my class in October know that we uh, often do pumpkin carvings as a, a class activity. I don't have a class this year, but I still got a pumpkin. I'm still going to carve it. Uh, Friday, October 30th, the day before Halloween, I'm going to carve this pumpkin on the show, but I need your help. Every year, I like to give my pumpkin a name. I would like my students out there in the internet world to help me name my pumpkin this year. Should it be Peter, because it starts with P, and we call him Peter Pumpkin? I don't know. Do we call, do we call it Sarah Squash? I don't know. It's up to you guys. Will you please send me an email, chris at chrisinenglish.com, and suggest your name for the pumpkin. The winner will be notified and will be made internet famous when I announce the name. So remember, we got a pumpkin. We're going to carve him, but he needs a name. Ugh. Don't fall. All right. Let's do another thing here. Uh, the question of the day today, what is the most boring thing of them all? And I've been trying to think of my answer. What's the thing in the world that bores me more than anything else? The good news is I don't get bored a lot. I've got lots of stuff that I can do to keep me interested. But I think for me, the most boring thing in the world, being home alone. And I've gotten to do that a lot since March. Yeah. Uh, I have books to read. I've got shows to watch. I've got games to play. Uh, I've done a lot of that stuff. And so I'm not so interested in these things alone. So sometimes I just sit here in front of my computer a little bit bored with not much to do. That's my problem, because I'm a smart guy. I can think of stuff to do, and I should just think of more things to do to keep myself active. But what about you? What, in your opinion, is the most boring thing in the world? Why do I ask this? Well, because today I'm going to teach you some phrases that we use in English to say if something is interesting or boring. Let's get to it. The first one, it's Fascinating. The word fascinating is a fascinating word. If we say something is fascinating, we mean it interests our mind. It makes us curious to know more. It's fascinating. In the TV show Star Trek, you will hear the character Spock say something similar, but he just uses one word. Fascinating. Fascinating. All right, that's a terrible Spock impersonation, I know. But he says fascinating when he thinks something is interesting. It's intriguing. If something is intriguing, it means it makes us very interested. Yes, Mr. Oh, Mr. Spock. But Spock has, a, has an interesting spelling, S-P-O-C-K, Spock, Mr. Spock. One of my favorite TV characters, actually. It's intriguing. Intriguing is a word that means very, very, very interesting. Something that is intriguing, not only is it interesting, but it's a little complicated, a little difficult, and we have to figure it out like a puzzle. Perfect dungeon, Mr. Spock, S-P-O-C-K. Perfect. Intriguing. I couldn't tear myself away. Have you ever watched a, a video that was so interesting that you, you couldn't look away? You, had, you just had to watch? Maybe you heard a knock at your door, but you said, hold on one minute, because you had to see the rest of the video. Yeah, you couldn't tear yourself away. You couldn't make yourself leave because it was so interesting. I couldn't tear myself away. Here's another one, kind of similar. I couldn't put it down. This is often used when we're reading something like a book. If a book is so interesting, 
that we can't stop reading, we say, oh, it's so interesting. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put the book down. That's happened to me. I found myself up for hours. Once I found myself up till the sun came up reading a book, and every time I finished a chapter, I would say, oh, okay, one more chapter. And then the sun came up. I couldn't put it down. It was so interesting. Another way of saying that, I was so into it, I lost track of time. I was into it means that I was excited about it. It made me interested. I lost track of time means I forgot what time it was because it was so interesting. Just like the story I told about reading the book until the sun came up. Yeah, it was so interesting. I was so into it. I lost track of time. Interesting. These are phrases that we can use when we want to say something is interesting. It's fascinating. It's intriguing. I couldn't tear myself away. I couldn't put it down. I was so into it. I lost track of time. Good phrases to use. But what are some phrases that we can use when we want to say something is not interesting, when we want to say something is boring? Dungeon is saying that he was into the Star Trek series. Very good. I was also into the Star Trek series. I love, I am into the Star Trek series. But Dungeon, oh, good, good spelling, Star Trek, Trek, T-R-E-K, good. Uh, but of course, Dungeon, you know, and I know, and everybody knows Star Wars is better than Star Trek. Sorry. So it's not bad. It's not bad. Being number two is not bad. But Star Trek is number one. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. Here are some phrases that we can use when we want to say something is boring. It does nothing for me. It does nothing. I love Star Trek. I love Star Wars. Titanic. Ti Titanic does nothing for me. Real. Near, far, wherever you are. Yeah, it does nothing for me. Yeah. Mom, put that one on the refrigerator. It does nothing for me means that it doesn't spark my interest. It doesn't make me curious. It doesn't make me want more. It does nothing for me. I was bored to death. I was bored to death. If something is so boring that it makes you die, we would say, oh, I was bored to death. Mom's telling me to remember the day job. <laughs> now, of course, we don't actually and really die when we're bored, but maybe something so boring we want to die. I don't know. But please, don't die. Not now, because that would mean my show is boring. I was bored to death. Another way of saying that idea I was dying of boredom. To die of boredom is the same idea. We're not actually saying that someone's dying or anything like that. Uh, but we are saying that something's very, very boring and it doesn't keep our attention and we don't want to keep doing it. We want new, better, different. I was dying of boredom. And here's one more for you. Maybe my favorite. It's about as exciting as watching paint dry. If something is as exciting as watching paint dry, we would say that's pretty boring. Have you ever watched paint dry? Have you ever painted a wall and then sat there and, and, and just watched as the paint dried? 
don't know. It's very boring. It's not exciting at all. Anything, anything would be more interesting. Yeah. If something is completely boring, then we would say it's as exciting as watching paint dry. It does nothing for me. I was bored to death. I was dying of boredom. It's as exciting as watching paint dry. These are expressions we use in English to talk about things that are exciting, interesting, or dull and boring. Now, question of the day. What's the most boring thing of all? Is it Titanic? Is it grammar? Is it phrasal verbs? I don't know. You guys tell me. What's the most boring thing in the world? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's okay. Uh, if you think of an answer, you can email me, Chris in English, Chris at ChrisInEnglish.com, or you can wait till this is posted on Instagram and leave a comment there, or you can wait till this is posted on YouTube and leave a comment there. If you want. I hope you do, because I'll look forward to hearing from you. How are we doing here? Oh, we're almost out of time. Uh, before we go, though, does anyone have any last questions that they would like to ask or share? Dungeon has a sentence for us. He says, I'm dying of waiting for the next Star Wars series. Is that boring? I hope it's not boring. I'm excited to see the next Star Wars series. Oh, oh, Dungeon. The new Mandalorian season starts uh, the end of this month, October 30th. Watch. <laughs> My mom is saying the most boring thing in the world, math. Yeah, well, I think math is exciting. I think doing math is boring. <laughs> All right. That's my show. Uh, thank I want to say very quickly, a very special thank you to my good friend, Dungeon Dungeon. Thank you for joining the show today. Thank you for being my very special guest star. Uh, I think we might have a very special guest star at least once a week. I think we're going to start doing that because I like talking to my students. That's what I have got for all of you today. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll be looking forward to seeing you guys on Thursday. We'll have a great time again. Until then, please remember my name is Chris, and I love you all. Go away. <laughs>